Did you know? Although Princess Peach was originally created by Nintendo veteran Shigeru Miyamoto, the design we know today was created by an entirely different artist. Animator and character designer Yoichi Kotabe was asked by Miyamoto to redesign Peach. Miyamoto wanted her to look stubborn yet cute, and for her eyes to look a little cat-like. This process ultimately led to Peach's current design of a short-sleeved dress and blonde hair. Kotabe was also commissioned to enhance the design of both Mario and Bowser. Although Kotabe left Nintendo in 2007, he'd returned to design Peach's letters in Super Mario 3D Land. In Japan, the princess has always been known as Peach. When Super Mario Bros. was released in the West, however, she was named Princess Toadstool. This would be her official English name for almost a decade. The first game to give her the name Peach outside of Japan was Yoshi Safari, a first-person rail shooter on the Super Nintendo. The name was most likely changed so it would fit inside the Yoshi Safari dialogue boxes, and it was reverted back to Toadstool in subsequent Mario games. Three years later, the release of Super Mario 64 resolved the discrepancy by using both names for the character, and from then on, she was a officially called Peach in all regions. Compared to her appearance in official artwork, Peach's early in-game sprites looked quite different. One example is the original Super Mario Bros., where she wore a white dress and had red hair. This was due to the limitations of the NES's picture processing unit, which had a limited color palette and could only render four colors per sprite tile. The first time Peach had blonde hair in the game itself was in NES Open Tournament Golf, and it was the only game on the NES to do so. The 1986 animated movie, The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, is notable for being the first time that Peach was given a voice, provided by pop singer Mami Yamase. Other actors who have voiced Peach include Samantha Kelly, Nintendo of America localization manager Leslie Swan, and Jen Taylor, who's also known for her role as Cortana in the Halo series. Princess Peach has been in more video games than any other female character in history, having made appearances in over 80 titles to date. During the development of Mario Tennis for the Nintendo 64, the designers at Camelot came up with an idea for a new character tentatively named Waru Peachy to serve as a rival counterpart to Princess Peach in the same vein as Wario and Waluigi. However, this idea was shot down by Shigeru Miyamoto. In an interview with Kotaku, Punch-Out! Wii's producer Kensuke Tanabe revealed that he originally wanted to include Princess Peach as a guest character. However, she was dropped due to the possible negative reaction of violence against women. Another game where Peach was considered as a playable character during development is New Super Mario Bros. Wii. When asked why she wasn't playable in the game, Miyamoto replied, I thought it'd be nice to have her as a playable character, but the Toad characters had a closer physique to a Mario character than Peach does. And if one of the four had a dress, we'd have to come up with some special programming to manage how the skirt is handled in the gameplay. And that's really the only reason why Peach isn't playable. Of course, if we had Wario in there, we'd have to program a way to make him fart. Peach finally got her break with Super Mario 3D World. World. According to the game's producer, Koichi Hayashida, Peach wasn't originally planned as a playable character. At the start of development, she was intended to be the damsel in distress character as she is in other Mario titles. The idea of her being playable was brought up by the game's producer, Yoshiaki Koizumi. Koizumi told Polygon, I feel like Mario games have done lots of representation of male characters over the years, so it's actually really nice to be able to have a female playable character in the game. I think she adds a lot to the sense of competition when you get in multiplayer. You can have different people choosing different characters based on their personality or whoever they like. And Princess Peach is just really a lot of fun to play. The first game to focus solely on Peach was Super Princess Peach for the DS. According to Miyamoto, it was important to Nintendo that Peach was portrayed as optimistic and empowered in the game. He went on to say that Peach has never seen herself as protected by Mario. Our image of her is one of strength. Many of the game's developers come from homes where the mother wears the boots. Super Princess Peach has several unused objects and enemies that appear to be heavily inspired by Yoshi's Island. These include rolling chomp blocks, two types of boos, and sprites of goonies taken straight from Super Mario. Mario Advance 3. There's also two unused types of Goombas that seem to be based on the glad and calm emotions. Also present in the data, but not used in the final, are the seven Koopalings. Only their art exists, but they're fully animated and would likely have been bosses. There's also a total of 11 stages not used in the final game. They include a test stage with warp pipes leading to other unused stages, a level with a pair of doors and a floor that freezes when the sad vibe is used, a stage full of blocks, enemies, and coins that sends the player to world zero when completed, and a level containing so many sad Goombas that it causes the game to lag and the graphics to glitch out. Super Princess Peach was developed by Toze, a Japanese video game company that specializes in outsourced projects. Since being founded in 1979, Toze has worked on over 1,000 games, most of which they've never been officially credited for. Toze's company policy is to never have a vision and only follow their clients' instructions. The only ex 
exception to this rule is the legendary Starfy series, which Toze shares ownership of with Nintendo. The data for Super Princess Peach contains unused 3D models and textures that appear to be based on the legendary Starfy games. These graphics are present in the data for Densetsu no Stavi 4, where they are also unused. The developers also snuck a more obvious reference to Starfy into Super Princess Peach. The starfish enemy bears a heavy resemblance to Starfy, the main character of the legendary Starfy games. The starfish's in-game description states that it's rumored to be the Prince of a Kingdom, which is also an allusion to Starfy's backstory as the Prince of the Puff Top Kingdom. Did you also know that before the 3DS, Nintendo tried to make 3D versions of the Game Boy Advance and a 3D screen add-on for the GameCube? Or that every 3DS has a creepy image of a rhinoceros skull in its system files? For more 3DS facts, check out the Digino Gaming video on the 3DS. And don't forget to subscribe for more facts and trivia. And if you like this video, give it a like. And since we talked a lot about Princess Peach today and the game Super Princess Peach, why don't you go check out my video on my channel about Super Princess Peach? It's a pretty good one. It's one of my favorites, and I love Peach. I love Waluigi, but we're talking about Peach today, so we talk- there you go. It's a Peach video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good day!